Well, I think we've got Ben here. Do we have Ben here? Hello, yes. Hello. Welcome, Ben. Welcome back to the show. Yes. Uh, well, why don't you tell how you know, people... How you we had John a few weeks ago, but why don't you tell the people the story and then tell them about the, you taking the polygraph test to uh, verify your story. Oh, well, okay. So essentially, um, uh, I, I had recently come forward and uh, I was trying to explain that I had been to a party back in 2007 and uh, it had a whole lot of different very interesting guests. I guess not at the time. At the time, I didn't know who any of these people were, but uh, in context of nowadays, with what's in the paper, uh, these, these people were all really big fish, or at least became uh, uh, eventual big fish in politics. Um, so I, I went to a party. It was in Hamden, Connecticut, uh, off of uh, Skiff Street. And uh, this was in 2007, around February. And um, it was uh, a, a Nexium recruitment mixer uh, among some of the other guests. We had um, Allison Mack, Keith Rainier, um, Eric Schneiderman. Um, now, Eric Daniels. Schneiderman. Now, Eric Schneiderman, he's the past attorney general of New York that just quit, just dropped out because because of um, his history of beating up women and sexual slaves and stuff. And that was just a couple months ago, this Eric Schneiderman. So go on. I just wanted people to know who that is. But he shows up yeah, now in 2018. But go on. Uh, another fella, uh, James Elephantis, was there. James Elephantis um, of Pizzagate fame. And um, Nancy Salzman, she was also there. As well as um, Claire and Sarah Boston. Right. Nancy Salzman is connected to the Clinton Global Initiative. She's one of the co-founders of Nexium, for which Allison Mack has now and Keith Rainier have both been charged with human and child sex trafficking. Just, and then the Bronfman sisters that you mentioned, Ben, are the billionaire heiresses to the Seagram's fortune that financed Nexium to the tune of $150 million and also um, were, are protecting Keith Rainier and helping finance his defense, it appears. But so just for background purposes, but please go on. Then. And uh, right. two other people that were there uh, was Anthony Weiner and Uma Abedin. Right, right. They're all there together, all the perverts and pedophiles hanging out together in 2007, and now it's 2018, and it's just coming out now. But the all-star there was Stormy Daniels, right, Ben? Yeah, Stormy. She was she was right there. And uh, yeah. I got to hang out with her for just a little bit. What she? What was she like? She was all right. She was amiable. Um, yeah. She's down to earth. Uh, yeah. She's a friendly person. Surprise! Yeah. You know, for for being an adult film star, porn star, she was a she. She seemed like a a, a nice person. <laughs> well, I'm so sure they all seem like. Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead. I, I don't know. It's, it's anyone's to, guess. I, I don't know like, anything. That, I think that whatever there. she's doing now with this guy, Michael Avenatti, and I'm not even sure, is Michael Avenatti a real lawyer? I, I, that's a funny, because I swear, uh, I have a theory that he he might, I don't know, maybe he plays like a, um, he was in like a porno as a lawyer or something like that, and just no one ever told him otherwise, so he just kept going with it. I don't know. But they're doing some kind of weird show right now. And um, I think I almost want to say that they're on Trump's payroll or something like that. There's something up with that. And um, really, why do you want to say that? Yeah. The, well, the other side of that is that, you know, I had been paying attention to her Twitter a little bit. And I noticed that a week before her arrest, she had put out a tweet that said, um, so why not? Uh, so, something around the lines, I'm going to paraphrase, and I, and I might butcher it, I don't know, but she said something around the lines of uh, filming a porno in prison. So I think they all knew what was going to go down and how that was all going to happen. I don't know if that was some publicity or for something. I know that the, the name of the club was Sirens, which, I mean, Sirens, Cops, it, it just seems all kind of uh, 
uh, contrived in a way. Staged, yeah. Uh, uh, there's something up with that. I agree, definitely. Oh, it's very fishy. And then today I said, I see uh, her lawyer announces she's getting a divorce, you know. And I said, oh, is this another little step in their, in their distraction plot? Now, you know, I mean, well, it's running low now, you know, from them pulling her out on CNN every day and stuff now. So they come up with another new little twist. Don't oh, you get a divorce now? <laughs> right. Well, apparently when she was arrested, she uh, indicated that she was single. And, oh, really? And someone, yeah, and someone picked up on that. So uh, there was some, another person did some research and discovered that, in fact, uh, they went back to Michael Avenatti, who, who insisted she was still married, but then he had to retract that and acknowledge that, in fact, she had filed for divorce, and um, they were separated. You know, so who knows what to believe? You know? Yeah. They just make it up yeah. as they go along. You know? That's right. So crazy. I agree with that. Well, what, uh, so, so, what so anyways... Um, yeah. With, with what happened with this story, because I, I had been trying to get some traction on, on because I, it is, I know it's a fantastic story. People hear this stuff, and they think I'm just full of crap for it, for the most part. And I don't think it's mostly uh, that people don't believe me. I think that it's just people that don't want to believe me. Dang, I'm uh, well, this, this, um, we uh, I've been working with um, someone named the Tamster, and... Um, she ended up uh, contacting a uh, investigative polygraph service, and I ended up taking a polygraph. Um, in regards, I was asked questions in regards to the um, the, the uh, event that I had gone to and the people that had been at that event, and um, I, we made a video of it. I put it up online, and um, as according according to the polygraph. Uh, technician who he's a he's a the owner and the certified polygraph examiner. Uh, he said I was being honest that I wasn't trying to be deceptive in any kind of way. He said I was being truthful as far as he was concerned. And uh, you know he seemed like a nice guy. He seemed like he 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 wasn't uh, he wasn't full of crap or anything like that. He's a good guy. His name is Stephen D. Ham Hamry H A M R E. And. Um, yeah. He's a I put that video up yesterday on Facebook. Oh, your polygraph video? What's that? Okay. I said I put that video up yesterday of your polygraph video on Facebook. Okay. Okay, yeah. so then, yeah. then y'all y'all are all up to speed then. Sure. And I, and I said, um, I said from the start, when this Nexium scandal broke open, I said right off the bat that this is one that's going to be the one that brings the elite down. I just knew they were involved in this. And so when I saw your video... You know, you explained, and then that you said Stormy Daniels was there. It was like, holy cow, this is it. You know, here, you put them all together here, and this, this in 2007. So here we are in 2018 when everything's breaking loose, and somebody like you comes forth and tells us what was going on 11 years ago. So they're all together, you know, in humor and... Wiener, all of them. And then tell us about Wiener now. What was he doing? He was taking some notes or something, wasn't he? Uh, so he came in. Um, I think I just finished a cigarette or something like that, and I had come in. And um, he he just he he was just kind of like this sweaty guy, really really thick. Uh, Really thick New York accent, mm -hmm. and um, uh, you know he he introduced himself. He was polite. Um, he was very alert. Uh, he, he introduced Uma as well to me, and um, I he just I you know I none of these people really struck me as super super weird or deviant or anything like that. They presented themselves as um, you know, just, just people that were there just to kind of hang out and have fun, you know? I didn't, you know, like I said before, I didn't see them do anything illegal. I didn't see anything really out of the ordinary from, from my point of view. Um, 
but I did, you know, I walked away from that party when I did leave that party. I did feel like, man, that was that was a pretty weird. That was all like that was just really weird. Sure, well, that and what if? Go ahead, Chris. You said your your girlfriend at the time um, described some videos that they were sh- she and others were shown. During the party, yeah, so that was they they had they had gone through a session where they all looked at videos, and um, you know later on I I had I had the opportunity you know, I I said you know hey what was up with those videos and uh, my girlfriend's friend who was was originally the person who was invited to the party and then invited uh, my girlfriend at the time, and then that's how I got invited along was through her. I wasn't even supposed to be there. They didn't want any men there as, as far as I could tell. Uh, but they were watching videos. Uh, I asked about it later and they just said, yeah, it was just all these different weird, you know, murder, like people getting killed or, you know, people getting beaten up and stuff like that. And uh, basically just snuff videos. I think that's what, what was being described. And, and why um, did they were so annoyed? Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of a bizarre thing, and people say, oh, you know, that's that's really weird for you know a bunch of people out of, out of supposed you know just like these, these, a bunch of these Yale girls running around and watching these enough videos and stuff. But you know, uh, I, I think I've said it before. I mean, Yale is a, a notorious place where there's a lot of secret stuff that goes on there, all kinds of secret societies and things like that. You go down High Street and see this building 322 right there. That's uh, the Skull and Bones building. Right now, how did it occur to you? How did it come to you? Um, come to you at this time that about that party? Um, what, I, I, pardon me. I, 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 what do you mean? I said, how did it occur to you to come forth? Now, how did it occur to you that that party was important at this point in time? Um. Well, essentially, I had been watching this this TV show with Allison Mack in it, and it kind of just brought up all these memories of, of, for whatever reason, you know, I had been watching this show, which I, under what I thought, I had never even seen the show before. And as soon as I started watching it, I just had all this deja vu and said, you know, I've seen this before. And I just started trying to dig and think about where I'd seen it before. I was like, oh, yeah, it was at that weird party. And then I just started, all the details just kind of flashed at me. And, uh, you know, like I said before, it was just an oh, shit moment where I just said, oh, wow, you know, it's all those people, are you kidding me? And then yeah. on top of that is thinking about that whole party and then saying, you know, this is almost like seeing a UFO or something. Like, I got to tell people about this, but no, you know, under, under the, uh, looking at, looking at the, uh, parameters of it, I mean, that's, that's a pretty, that's a pretty tough, uh, statement to give, you know? Yes. Yes. Have people been sorry, harassing I, you? What's that? Have people been harassing you? Oh, sure. Yeah, here. Yeah, well, you know, you, you get people who make comments and things like that. But, I mean, overall, I don't think if someone was going to go and try to kill someone, I don't think that they would go and just say so beforehand on the Internet, you know what I mean? So I don't take a lot of things seriously, I guess. Oh, well, if I was you, I would take it seriously, Ben. I'd be mighty careful. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I do. I do. I uh, When, I, when I'm uh, out and about, I, I do... Uh, take care to look over my shoulder and whatnot and make sure that, you know, um, yeah. I'm, I'm not, at least, at least as far as I know, I'm not being monitored, followed, or anything like that. Uh, I, I haven't had anyone uh, uh, harass me in person or anything like that. So that's, you know, I'll, that's, that's nice. That's good. That's a plus. Right. And uh, I think with the video, I've had a lot of good reception to it. I've had, I've had some people... Um, message me or uh, write somewhere and just, just say, th- you know, thanks a lot. And, you know, I, just, uh, I, I think that's really great. I think that uh, as as for all the, the bad comments I ever get, it's just one of those good comments that just sets me right back into um, a good frame of mind where I, I could keep going and just say, hey, all right, let's figure this thing out and, and see what it all means. And that's what yeah. it's all about. And the people who have come at me and and have been any in any kind of way vicious or um, 
just 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 blunt overall, just kind of a, just acted in a banal manner. These people have something more invested than just having an opinion, and it's obvious. Right. Uh, I don't think, and, and that's where I'll leave that. That's I'll leave that right there because that's fine. Like what I have to say is more important than trying to win some piss fight or some shit fight. Yeah. What do you think about the latest um, news about the latest side of Hollywood, the perverts and pedophiles that are showing up? I don't. I mean, I'm just not surprised whatsoever. But, you know, when these things pop out there, uh, I think it's important to see these things. I mean, people might want to turn away and say, oh, that's disgusting. I don't want to see it. But these are the things that are happening in our world. These are the things. This is the world that we let happen. And we got to we got to be able to face up to it and own it. Right. Exactly. And we've got to change it. And so, right, the the stuff that comes out is so horrifying for any of us to look at or read or view, but we have to. You know, they count on that, that that it's so horrifying and and appalling that we won't look at it. And and that's how they've gotten away with this for all these years. You know, people can't stand looking at this stuff. But like you said, this is a world we're living in right now, and we have got to fix it. We let it get to this point. Well, you, for instance, uh, take take Jimmy Jimmy Seville for an example. Nobody nobody even wants to talk about that guy. No one wants to admit anything that that guy did. No one's no one's going to come out and say anything about him. Now think about that. If you were ever molested by that guy, and that nobody's saying anything, that's a powerful thing to have to, to have to sit there and say. You know, nobody seems to give a shit. No, well, because all the people that that won't we'll talk about it, we're involved in it. He was providing children to all the elite. You know, and that's well, why Queen Donald... Elizabeth yeah. Queen Elizabeth knighted him three times. She got and the she got some award that the only other people that have received that award from the Queen are um Prince Philip and Prince Charles. Really? And yet yeah. Yeah. And the Vatican gave an award too. Bill. To Jimmy Savile? Yep. Yeah. I forget what the award is called, but yep, he got one from the Vatican. This is how, well, he's probably supplying them to the Vatican, too. I mean, he, yeah. he was doing, he was raping these kids for, since the 60s, I think. And he died, what, in 2011? Yep. It was over 40 years. And the yeah. current CEO of the New York Times that supposedly mm-hmm. debunked Pizzagate and came yeah. to the defense of James Alephantis. Mark Thompson is his name. Well, Mark Thompson also was chief of the BBC and covered up Jimmy Savile's sexual abuse of children for decades when he was, during the time he was chief of BBC. Liz McKean was a BBC reporter that outed Mark Thompson, and she turned up dead uh, in 2017. Yeah, didn't they shoot her or kill her, like, right outside of her house? She supposedly died of a stroke. That's what was, how it was reported. Oh, but, yeah, right. Um, right. But, you know, he's now at the New York Times, and he's, he went straight from the BBC when Liz McKean outed him in 2012 to the New York Times, where he is now. And he's also covered up Tony Podesta. There was a New York Times article about him that featured the photos around his home of children, new children um, that were prepubescent. And then they pulled those digital photos but left up the article about him and his you know, spectacular career that we should all know about. Well, that's the problem we have. You know, all all of these people are involved in this pedophile mess. Yeah. You know, yeah. the mainstream media reporters, they're all involved in this themselves. So we can't get the word out. You know, we've got to do it this way. The ultimate media. Yeah. Ben, is there, where can people, what is your hope now that you've come out with this? I mean, have you been able to um, get interviews or have people been writing about your story or what is it you'd like to see come of this? Um, 
I think I think these things are all just pieces of a puzzle we need to put together. There's, there's a certain operation, there's a code language, there's all kinds of different aspects. There's uh, uh, people who, who, who have put all this together, there's people who clean it up, there's people who hide it. There's, you know, we, we have all these different intricate mechanisms, and it's all a matter of just trying to decipher uh, what these, these people have done for so long. Great. Well, Ben, I want to thank, thank you so much. much for coming on. That you are so brave, you know, and we will definitely keep in touch. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you, uh, Evelyn. And thank you, Ben. Thanks. Okay. Well, we will see you next week, people. Bye. Bloody and bruised.